then I take them all uh, downtown to Leon's shop where I have the the oven and everything for making the masts. And uh, what I did is, uh, you guys all have seen the string gauge that I use for for checking the parallelness. And what that does is it not only makes sure that the runners are parallel to each other, but that they're perpendicular to the boat. Most of the dial gauges that everybody uses, you can very easily have the runners askew one way or the other. And people say, well, how can you make sure that this uh, runner alignment fixture is accurate? And it's very easy to do. You just put the runner on, and you put the fixture on, and you make them correct, and then you turn the fixture around it, <laughs> put it the opposite way. And if it's correct, perfect both ways, then you know the, the fixture is perfect and your runners are perfect. And so what I did was I, I made a mast that is just from the hound to the base out of a piece of wood. It's the correct length from the hound to the base. So in the shop, I can put the, the side stays on in, uh, very easily. And then I put every set of runners in and uh, shimmed them. You know, if they needed a little work, I made some patches of uh, very fine fiberglass, some squares. And I used uh, super glue and zip kick. It's uh, super glue and then it instantly kicks off the glue. And then you just lightly sand, and then you go and put it back in. And, and this way, the, I also make sure that the runners are tight in the front and back of the chalk, not in the middle. And uh, so that when you put the runner in the chalk, it actually is just a little bit snug going in there. But when you tighten it, you know it's grabbed in the front and back and not, you know, in the middle. So it won't move so much in the, in the runner. You the just chalk. said that you, you have sort of in your shop, you, you have a... Um, a certain sort of like a mast which you put the side stays on. Yeah. How much deflection do you put on? About my weight plus 30 to 50 pounds. So a little bit more than what my weight. <coughs> 30 pounds. Yeah. Don't you think that with sheet tension there's much more? Yeah, but deflection. the most important time for alignment is in light air downwind. <laughs> if it's heavier air, uh, the front, the runner is coming up. And the way my plank works with the gull wing, the skates stay very straight up and down through a long range of uh, deflection. So they seem to be very good through a wide range of conditions. So I don't worry about putting you no know, more weight in or more tension on. But with this system it's a lot easier to just put more tension on to deflect the plank rather than putting weight in the boat. Because if you put weight in the boat then every time you've got to go changing runners you're lifting so much weight and uh, there's more friction on the fixtures. So I think it's better to just do it with the, the rig tension. <coughs> How do you decide what runner to use? Because you have 15 sets. I uh, just experience and look around at what other people are using. Do you sometimes, because I have 33 years of racing ice boats now, so I have a little bit. But uh, uh, and I also speak with the professor Virginsky in uh, Vorma, of course, and uh, you know talk to Carlson, where he's always really helpful. Do you sometimes put? On the left, uh, a different type of runner than on the right. I haven't seen, messed around with much of that. Doing that. Yeah, I have I've seen them do that. But, yeah, so then I just wait and see which ones they have on, yeah. and I put mine on. Because <laughs> 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 I hate to get nicks in my runners in practice, you know. So it's pr I don't go out and do a lot of tuning before because I just I know I'll mess up my runners, and then I have to start again. So. What would you like to use for runner for this ice? <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> no excuses. Uh, no excuses. I actually think probably the, I don't know, and we will have to see when we go out there, but I believe that the best runner will be a, uh, a minimum T iron that is long and, and very flat, 100 degrees, not very sharp, and uh, kicks up in the front. The T actually goes up in the front rather than having the T be straight because you're going to hit those drifts and you're going to want to be able to ride over the drifts and I think if you have a, a tee that's bent up in the front it might be a little better. And I, mine aren't bent up in the front. But okay. <laughs> Maybe make a drawing of that. I have one that you think is why. How much? <laughs> we can all start sanding tonight. <laughs> The T is bent up in the front. A lot of the T runners are just straight. You know, I mean, the T stops and then the runner goes up. What runner do you use for steering? Pardon me? What steering runner do you use? I have a T runner for the front, too, that I can use. I'll look and see how it's going. But the T runner is pretty flat. The front T runner is pretty flat, too. I think on this stuff, if you have a, a thin runner, uh, you can get through some of the crusty stuff, and if it's long and flat, you can ride a 
on top of the crust, some of the crusty stuff. What do you consider flat? Can you maybe just put some? This is the, what kind my, of crown you use, and how my, do you measure your crown? My T runners are uh, <coughs> 23 inches of 8 thousandths flat. So the runner is 36 inches long, and it's. Uh, Can you just write these things down? Just I don't know. I don't know where it'll be. <laughs> Calculate how many centimeters that is. It's about 40 centimeters. Maybe. 40. And uh, it's very little, almost no true flat, though. No, where it just lays down flat. It always has just a little bit of rock to it. What is your favorite set of runners? What you can use? Can I have a set at home of uh, 3 16 440C that have uh, um, carbon stiffeners on them. And I have a box for them. They fit very easy on the, on the boat. And I sail with these all the time in training at home, and uh, I really like them. I think that's probably the most important runner for anyone to have is a good set of 3 16 uh, probably with carbon stiffeners, and uh, for, so if the ice is bumpy and you're going fast, it helps to keep the runner straighter. What do you use in snow? I mean, considerable height of snow. I have uh, 440C uh, plate runners, 26-inch uh, and 30-inch runners. So it's minimum degrees? length and minimum length. Yeah, they're all 90 degrees. Do you still have, because I've seen some poles, uh, use this, like what we call... Facet slide. Facet slide, yeah, already here and here. They actually the angle change. Yeah, your angle change. Yeah, no, nothing like that with mine. My runners are all 90 degrees, and if I could make them all 440C, I'd make them all 440C. A lot of people, uh, I mean, have serious beliefs in different kinds of steel being sticky and not sticky. Uh, it could be very true, and I, maybe I'm not so smart, but uh, I mean, a lot of people like the stellite when, the when it's warm, when there's water on the ice and stuff. And I have some stellite, and I haven't had much success with them. So, and I, I've had a lot more success with my 440C, so I basically stick with what I know works, especially at the big events. I try to just sail the runners that I've used before and I have confidence in. I think it's crazy to throw something new on at a big event that you don't that you don't know, that you haven't already used. Can you maybe describe the runners? Because I've seen you use runners which are very dull here, very blunt, very blunt there, and quite sharp here. That's where all my runners are, all of them. All the runners are this way. Okay. Because I, one day it was light air in sticky conditions like this, and uh, you could almost sail, you could kind of sail, and I just basically was standing on my runner plank and, and watching the runner as it was going through the snow, and I'd stand on the other side and watch the runner as it was going through the snow, and when it was sharp in the front, when it would hit a little bump, it would naturally try to kick the runner to whichever side the crack forced it. And so I thought, hmm, that's no good. So I just make the runners dull in the front, so if you do hit any kind of bump, the sharp edge doesn't so much try to steer it towards one side or the other. And then uh, the back of the runners I always make very dull because if you kick the front end of the runner up, you don't want to stick a point into the ice. So all of my runners, if you look at any of them, they're incredibly dull in the front and back, and I have my profile the way I want it. I think Joey has a question. <coughs> where, where do you put your pivot point, and uh, do you play with that? Well, they're all at about 15 inches from the back. About 15 inches from the back. It's similar to what Aka or Aka puts his. It's pretty close. His might be a little um, further back than mine. But, uh, and then basically, the, the standard runner, which I think is the best all around runner, is to have uh, 10 inches in front and 8 inches behind. 10 inches in front. And what I do is when I put the runner on the straight edge with the light behind it, I put the runner on and I block the light where the bolt is. I don't just let the runner find its own spot. I hold the runner so the light is blocked under the bolt. And then I bring the shim in until it stops on the front. And then I hold the front and bring the shim in from the back. I always do it the same way. And then I measure how much is in front of the bolt and how much is behind the bolt. As a matter of fact, on the straight edge I just marked the middle where I always put the bolt and then I have the inches marked off. So I just slide the things in and you don't have to try to lift up a tape line and hold it and then have the runner slip off and mess up your edge. You don't have to start all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. I hate when you screw up the edge. I can't tell. It must be terrible for you doing all this work on your runners. Isn't yeah, it? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ice boats? <laughs> you don't know. 
Is there any uh, new development in, in sales? Are you still working?